Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about a question that I had a subscriber ask, and I think it's a, it's a good point, and it's a point of confusion that needs to be clarified, uh, because I've explained in the past how certain people, by using too many partials, too many partial exercises, of how it leads to injuries, and specifically in the case of pec tears. And there's a, a fairly well-known YouTuber who tore both of his pectorals who has a long history of many, 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 many years of not doing any full range of motion chest exercises, he gets on a bench press and he tears both pecs the first time he tries to bench press heavy, like in many years, right? Very first time. And he didn't even get all the way down. And what people need to understand here is that we're talking about context. Because the person had asked, hey, for people who can't touch their chest on the floor press, isn't that a partial? Doesn't that predispose you to injuries? And again, we need to put it in context. So when we talk about people getting tightness in their pecs because they do partials, it means that they don't train any, any full range of motion exercises. In other words, they don't train any exercises to the point of where the hands are at least down to the chest. Uh, they do nothing but partials, and bodybuilders are oftentimes very bad about this. And, and what group of people is it that you usually see saying, well, this exercise won't build the pecs, so you have to do the flies and other stuff. And I'm not saying flies can't help build your pecs, and I'm not saying even some strength athletes might not benefit from flies, because they some will, right? They do exist. Assistance movements are context-dependent upon the needs of the individual and accessory exercises. There is no right or wrong accessory exercise. There's only is it a good exercise for you in this exact moment in your training, right? That's the way to look at accessories. They're on an as-needed case-by-case basis. So there are some guys who will benefit from a chest fly. But over the point, yeah, bodybuilders will oftentimes do partials on machines, tons and tons of it. They will bench press and stop an inch short of their chest or two inches short of their chest or four inches short of their chest. And they talk about, well, it's, it's my mobility, I can't, it hurts my shoulders, right? Because they don't know how to bench press. They don't know how to perform the exercise correctly. And that includes even Mr. Olympia winning bodybuilders. Pro tip, they, most of them don't know how to train. It's all drugs and genetics. It's drugs and genetics. Because half of them can't even perform a basic exercise that could be taught to school children. Right? performed in every sport on earth. They can't even perform them. They, they literally don't know what they're doing. So they can't perform a bench press. So they do a lot of partials. And what happens is that these guys who never train full range of motion, and that includes with dumbbells, they take dumbbells, which actually the benefit is that dumbbells can give you a deeper stretch, right? That is the actual benefit of a dumbbell. They give you a deeper stretch than a barbell can because the barbell hits your chest and it can't go any lower. Unless you use like my buffalo bar, which is actually one of the purposes of it, to increase your range of motion. You can get deeper, just like on a, on a dumbbell. That's why dumbbell chest presses work. It's the only reason they work. They're otherwise inferior to a barbell, but that range of motion. But they'll do partials on that. And that's the reason they end up needing 37 sets of flies every week. Because they still don't train their chest at the bottom. Uh, but you do that, what happens? You lose mobility. If you train things through a normal full range of motion, you get mobile at the bottom. Notice I said mobility, not flexibility. So that's, a, that's something that we need to discuss, isn't it? For injury prevention. A lot of people don't understand the difference. Flexibility is the ability to move a joint through a certain range of motion. Right? It has nothing to do with strength. It just has to do with how far can you physically move that joint. Which, what's your range of motion? That's what we mean by flexibility. Mobility is how strong are you at the terminal ends of your flexibility. A person can have mediocre flexibility in a joint and have good mobility. They have good mobility if they can grab a 500-pound weight and move it all the way to the end of their range of motion and back up. That's phenomenal mobility, even if they don't have the best range of motion. How strong are you at the far ends? 
of your personal flexibility. Now, mobility can have a flexibility component because obviously if you get really strong at the terminal ranges of motion, you tend to get a little bit more flexibility. But it's the ability to, be, to maintain your strength at those far ends. Well, what happens if these guys start losing mobility on the terminal ends because they don't train it at all? Or almost non-existent training of it, what happens? they lose strength at the terminal ends. That predisposes you to injury. It predisposes you to tears because you're not able to handle any sort of real resistance there. Now, people say, well, why does that matter if I'm not going to ever do it? Well, if you're never going to engage in any physical activity, that's fine. Like if for the rest of your life, all you're ever going to do is partials with a dumbbell or you're going to do your machine work with a limited range of motion or your half bench press and you're never going to do anything physical other than that. It's fine. You better not play a sport. You better not get in a fist fight and actually punch somebody as hard as you possibly can or have to push against someone or grab or, help or move furniture, right? In other words, you need to avoid all physical activity other than your gym stuff where you can perfectly control the range of motion if you don't build the mobility at the bottom. Because this is where a lot of times you'll see the bodybuilding types get hurt. They're not athletic, they're not mobile. They're just big and jacked. And they, they tear stuff when they actually do anything outside of their machine controlled environment. So over to the point, the floor press, it's a partial. However, it's a partial that builds tremendous strength right there at the bottom where it does start. I will say that because of the partial nature of it, if it is the only thing that you do for your chest, yes, it's going to predispose you to injuries outside of training. It's going to predispose you to injuries outside of training. However, does anyone who really trains the floor press in the context of a larger program not do some other stuff that's a deeper range of motion? Of course not. Almost everyone who floor presses does some bench press with a full range of motion, right? Or they do some dips. So if you're doing a fair amount of dips for a deeper range of motion than your floor press, for example, it's just body weight. Aren't you building that mobility anyways? Yeah, you'll be fine. That person will be fine. If you're doing pretty deep stretch dips and you do, you know, a couple hundred of them every week, I don't care if the floor press is your main chest press. You're not going to have that problem. Furthermore, where's our big issue with the partials on the bench press, the guys who train the partials? And that includes the dumbbell guys. Remember that Devin Physique guy doing goofy partials and never going all the way down, and he tried to max out on a dumbbell, and he ripped his pec. Why? Because he didn't have strength at the bottom, and he tried to use a really heavy weight that he wasn't capable of using, and the weight pulled him into a deeper range of motion than he was capable of normally doing. It ripped his pec. Same with guys who bench press. This is why I tell you guys you need to lose this nonsense of guys saying, oh, just stop at 90 degrees. No, learn how to bench, learn how to arch, learn how to set up and touch your dang chest. All right? You need to learn how to bench. It's ridiculous. The only reason people make those weird 90 degree rules and stuff is because people won't learn how to bench correctly and it's the only way to keep uh, basically idiots from getting hurt. They refuse to learn how to bench correctly. They refuse and therefore they will get hurt. Learn how to bench. But what happens? If you do the partial and you stop three inches short of your chest or four inches short of your chest for two years straight training all the time and you, you build a good mind-muscle connection in your weird partial guillotine press and then you accidentally hit failure one day and your spotter doesn't grab the weight quick enough, what happens? You tear a pec. You tear a pec because you have built a limited range of motion and you, you have no way to prevent it because there's nothing but air. Right? If you're going to do any partial exercise, what do you need to do? You need to have a physical object to stop it from coming lower. This is why the board press was invented for guys who do want to do a partial bench press. Powerlifters figured this out decades ago. It keeps you from getting hurt and it lets you perfectly control the range of motion. If you're going to use a limited range of motion, 
because the chest is where it stops and you better have a physical object to make it consistent. Well, the floor press handles that because if you're going to floor press and if it's going to be two inches off your chest, the floor, when your triceps reach the floor, that will determine your range of motion. There is no chance of it accidentally dropping too low. There's no chance of your triceps smashing through the concrete. So since you're not Superman and you're not capable of your triceps smashing through the concrete of the floor and accidentally going three inches deeper, you're at no risk of tearing your pec while doing it. But if you have built that sort of limited mobility and that's the only thing that you do, then you will be predisposed to, to higher injuries outside of the gym, right? And that's what we're talking about. But you know what? Even if you happen to work the floor press regularly into your training, as long as you're still building that mobility with other exercises, you're still going to be okay. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.